<laughs> okay, so um, I'm Vanessa from Mother of Movies, and I recently watched your short film, Kiddo. Um, really interesting idea centred around um, swapping some animal characters for humans. Mm. Um, the short is streaming on Ulta, as most people know, and uh, Ulta's a horror um, channel on YouTube. But first, though, I'd like to know how you, you met Brett, the director and co-writer for the film, um, okay. and then stem that into how you decided that you were going to make a movie. Okay, brilliant. Um, thank, thank you. So, just just to explain um, the the context of myself in in the film as well, um, sure. I, I I'm what's called the the the, the story creator. Um, so I came up with the initial idea um, for for kiddo, which was originally called animals, um, and then um, I decided that I'd, I'd I'd wanted to make a film for quite a long time quite an embarrassingly long time actually but I'd, I'd been procrastinating quite heavily because I felt either I didn't my ideas weren't strong enough or I wouldn't know where to start when it came to making a film but with with this this the concept of kiddo is so so very simple um I felt that it could be made quite easily as well um so I looked for a um I started off looking for a, a kind of a director of photography really somebody to shoot it um, I didn't even kind of start with a producer. I went, I want, I want to, I want to find somebody that I love the, the aesthetic of their work. Um, so yeah. I went onto Instagram and I simply searched for um, filmmakers in, um, in, in Derbyshire in the Peak District, which is near, near where I live. Um, because I wanted to have it to have a very rural, rustic American werewolf in London on the moors kind of vibe. Um, and yeah. I found, I found Jordan Carroll, um and i messaged him a little bit like you and i have done really and the next day I, was, I, I spoke to him in the morning um and and pitched pitched the idea and it was it, it really everything has you know credit to, to jordan it all stemmed from from him really and he was like a an, an ink blot on a on blotting paper really everything just kind of exponentially grew around around him because what he did was he pulled in lots of his um, the people that he'd loved working with that were, you know, friends and colleagues. Um, and um, then uh, he, it was, it was really his, his best friend, Brett Chapman, um, that he said, look, I, he said, I'd really like to direct this. He said, but I know somebody that would also be brilliant at, at directing it and, um, and, and suggested Brett. So Brett was a little bit, I think, on the fence initially because the story was, yeah. was so, um, so, um, so, so early on in its in its stages, really. Um, yeah. And there was there was we 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 headed off um, and gave it to um, a script writer, um, um, a lady based up in in Scotland, and and she came back and she was she was revealing too much. You you would have got what the film was about almost straight away because there was lots of. Tucking, tucking into meat and and meat dribbling down their their mouths and all this kind of stuff and we like no that yeah. we, what we want we want a sense of confusion for for at least eighty percent of the film really, um and um or or, or mystic you know mystery rather than confusion mm. and, um yeah so so what I did was I I came back with a, a much more detailed list it was still bullet pointed it wasn't like there was no real dialogue in there or anything it was just broadly what would happen from from beginning to end and it was really the end that was we weren't really sure how graphic um we wanted to be yeah, yeah. and yeah. then um, it, it does yeah pretty graphic though so it does, it does. Know, and makes it a horror film yeah and he and so when when that list was came for Brett when yeah I can see I can see where we could go with this now and he said and, and he'd like to write the script we were like mm. brilliant because <laughs> I had no experience in writing a script at all um I'm a, I'm a songwriter as opposed to a, a, a script writer so um yeah, and then he came back, and I think the first draft everybody was just fell in love with straight away, um, and and you know the kind of the rest is history really. But that was the journey to Brett. It wasn't like I knew Brett as a as a filmmaker and scriptwriter, and and he came back. So that's that's how we got to awesome. make it. 
Awesome. Um, that's a a really interesting background into mm. the making of the film. So who, whose idea was it to come up with the metaphors about um, the amusement park? So there's a lot of metaphors in the film and it, and it gave way to lots of interpretation. Um, as you said, mm-hmm. you wanted it to be mysterious and stuff. I've, As I sat with it, I kind of decided there was a clear message over it being... Um, too mysterious but that's after the fact so before the fact while you're watching it you kind of have to guess which direction it, it's going to go in until the end when it becomes um a fair bit clearer yeah but um who 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 came up with all the the allegories and the metaphors about the amusement park and the title um keto in itself which had only just clicked this afternoon i went oh <laughs> oh it's a lamb <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. a whole for days, I was sitting there thinking, you know, it's such an odd name for a... F-. And then I went, oh. <laughs> well, I think so, yeah. There was there was a lot of... Um, there, was, there were a lot of, like you say, allegories and, and metaphors uh, all the way through it. I think the, the very first pitch that I gave to Jordan was I the reason why I thought the film would be really interesting is... For the most part of the film, you think they're just going on a day out, and the mm-hmm. idea of the rumble of a of a roller coaster and the screams, yes, being so simply flipped from oh, that it's not children at a theme park; it's children being murdered, and it's the the roll the rumble of the roller coaster, um, is the rumble of the machinery at an abattoir. Um, mm. So I I pitched that with Jordan. That was my my very first kind of. I I felt that that's what made the film really interesting to watch. Was this, you know, um, because because when you when you think because you think you can then think back to a theme park and hear the rumble and the screams. And it's funny when we when they were actually making the film in the in the warehouse. Um, I went. I nipped off to the green room to go and have a wee. And when I came back, um, heading towards the building, I could hear children screaming, and um, I thought, "Oh, they're already they're already filming the the, the really graphic uh, uh, scenes." Um, and then I thought, "God, the, the sound really comes out of this building. It's really loud." Um, but then I realised it was actually a local primary school that had come out to play, um, and um, and it wasn't the film at all, and it it kind of it reinvigorated my my kind of thoughts that that's that's what people would think um and mm. it makes it even more horrifying because it's not just people screaming it's children screaming um yeah. and pigs that go to and it's it although kiddo yes that is a, a flip on it was my mom um used to i we i used to call children kids as, as all kids did in the in the 70s yeah. or whatever else and my mom always used to correct me and say um kids are baby goats you know, you don't mm. say it's kids is like a, you know, it's it's a slang that kind of didn't she didn't li- like particularly, um, and uh, so that's where kiddo came from because I I felt that, um, people call their children or or kiddo you know you're right kiddo everything cool kiddo it's it's an affectionate term for a child yeah um so and and also when i was in the recording well i was sorry i was mastering the album at abbey road and i i i talked to the guy there and he said oh what's your what's your um what's your album called and i said animals and he went oh like pink floyd and i thought because we knew we'd got a fair amount of time before the album would come out i had got a bit of breathing room to, if i wanted to change the name and I said to my my producer, the music producer, I said, I think I'm going to change the name. I think everybody's going to say that when it's released. So I knew that there was going to be a name change. And also right at the beginning with Jordan, um, I said to him, I know we're, we're, we're a fair way down the, the track, but I think I think I need to change the name of the film. And he wasn't too chuffed with that. I think probably because it it's it was it was my first sign that I had the potential to change things at the 11th hour which for a, <laughs> a director or a producer or, or whatever else is a fairly unnerving thing for, for a, a, a story writer to to kind of drop on them <laughs> so um, I think I think all of the broad kind of 
things like that were initial concepts that I'd come up with. But then, and then this is the great thing with collaborating is Brett came up with some amazing things too. Like, and um, that's why that, that, I don't know if you've managed to see the, the BTS photo video that I've just, just done. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's why I left that plate spinning thing to the very, very end, because that was his, that was his, that's the clever thing about being a story writer, working with a script writer is they go, look, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense or this needs to be tidied up to, for clarity or this gives to us too much away too early. Um, and he was really keen on the plate spinning, you know, it dropping in one part of the scene and then hitting again to end it, which I absolutely loved. Um, and things like the barcode or the QR code on the backs of the, okay. we were just going to have names written or numbers written on. I was saying, why mm-hmm. don't we have like stenciled numbers on the back? Because that's what you do with with livestock. Mm-hmm. And he was like, mm, not really sure. And he went, what about a QR code? I was like, that's amazing. Um, um, and certainly I think the most fundamental, as far as, far for the, as aside of the aesthetic, which was Jordan and Brett collectively, I think Brett's vision of making it truly horrific was something that I didn't really want to do because I didn't want it to be gratuitous. Um, and I didn't want to make, you know, as a almost ashamed ve- vegan, I didn't want people to be like, oh, here we go. Um, and all the people that wanted to, I wanted to convey this message to, to just switch off um, and it to be, you know, this finger pointing, finger jabbing vegan message. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was like, no, it needs to be really horrific because it is horrific. And I went, yes, it is horrific. Um, so, and, would and, you call uh, yourself an animal activist? Um, a mild one. I mean, I, I think I think things like making a film like this is a form of activism. Um yeah. I go, I've been to recently, um, I say over the last sort of few months, I've been to um, uh, vigils as well, where you stand outside um, abattoirs and you just, it's a silent protest. So you just hold placards up and talk about it through social media to let people uh, maybe that aren't aware that, you know, pigs are gassed before they're, you know, they're slaughtered because lots of people don't know that. I didn't know that. Um, so, and so that's my that's my form of activism. I've also started a um, a World Pig Week um, a, a event, um, which we run every year, um, uh, to do the same thing. But it's it's again, it's it's more look at these lovely animals, maybe don't eat them, rather than here's a, a pig upside down with its neck cut and blood spirit spurting out. Because I think. You know, you're only really preaching to the converted if you do that kind of stuff. I think people do need to know, but I don't think it's a good it's a good introduction to, you know, the subject, really. It, it, it is very shocking. I mean, fun fact, I, I actually worked at a, a, an abattoir um, for about three years just in the office. Wow. Not in the. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I've been looking for ages. I, I, I met somebody <laughs> recently at a funeral of all places that had worked in one. And I said I wanted to interview them and they were like, yeah, yeah, definitely. And then when it came to it, they were like silence <laughs> they just didn't want to talk about it yeah, like I, I i have respect for everybody's point of view and yeah, um i don't have an issue with it i kind of got an inkling of the angle during the film and and i've covered um other films with the same kind of angle as well so right. it's it's not something that um i would give radio silence for but it sure. is it is a confronting um thing i got a, a tour of the the slaughterhouse in my on my first day and I didn't make it to the final window because it was mm. it was too much for me to actually see so it, and I didn't eat, didn't eat meat for about a month <laughs> yeah. after yeah. I got the walk through yeah um but yeah it does it, it it's very confronting the the smell especially too so mm. um, yeah that's true because yeah. when, when you walk to them even a, a good 500 yards before you get there you know that's an it, the smell is is pretty strong yeah. and it's not it's not a smell yeah. of blood per se it's 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 you know no, it's different it's smell of fear right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's very thing. unique yeah. <laughs> um I, I i saw instantly what was happening at the end when yeah. uh some some things got put on screen i went oh <laughs> so yeah. yeah i knew instantly it was and a, a surprise at that point um I knew exactly what was was about to happen so mm. um yeah um but so you want to is there anything else that you want to 
explain about the concepts within the film? Because I know there's a lot of dynamics um, within the character set and the family. And there was another review that I read that um, really transcribed to um, how um, pets work in the family unit and there was other themes as well as this larger playing field. Mm. Um with the, the dad and the son who was going to take over the business and then you've got kiddo who's a part of the family. Um, one thing I didn't kind of couldn't work out was the the feeding of kiddo and her refusal to eat at the table. Mm. Do, you, do you, can you share some insight on, on that scene? Um, well, you're right. I mean, reading the interviews, I was really surprised about how many different interpretations of the film that could possibly be, yeah. which is really, really interesting to, um, because I was kind of assured, um, by Lewis, the producer, particularly, um, and Breton and Jordan about my concerns about how people, what people would with would think, how much we can give away, you know, um, there was there was very much a sense of don't mention pigs, don't mention animals, L leave it to people to interpret it in their own way. And I think certainly on Alter with all the comments, there's like 400 odd comments on there about, and people, some people are going, huh? By the end of the, they, they get to the end of the film and others oh, people just got it straight away and went on a big rant about, you know, the yeah. important um, uh, scenarios that, that can, that can uh, happen uh, around an abattoir. Um, but I was, I, I mean, some people said like they thought it was a, a metaphor for the Hollywood Hollywood uh, scene. Yeah, um, I was going to mention that as well because yeah, that was one I read. Like, and I went, really? Ooh, or, interesting. Or, or, or domestic <laughs> abuse. Um, yeah. I mean, my my metaphor that I I had was it's simply what if you were in the abattoir truck with your family on the way to the yeah. slaughterhouse and how that how how we would feel about that um well mm -hmm. how i'd feel about that if i was in there with my family knowing that well not knowing really just knowing one thing from all of your life and then something fundamentally changes and you don't know what's happening mm -hmm. you're bundled into a truck and then when you get there and it was like well ima imagine if there's a farm where there's only a handful of animals that really kind of hang around but the but there's a the 90 percent of them are shipped out every every day um so there's an idea of and a little bit like i suppose a little bit like we feel you know with our own mortality is we have an idea of what what happens when we die but we don't really know until the time comes so i guess it, the, yeah. the, those two broad metaphors really are our own looking at our own mortality and that elephant in the room um but also what it'd be like for animals so mm. um, all of the other interpretations, whether it's, you know, the Hollywood scene or domestic abuse or, or whatever else, that, that those are all in great interpretations and, and things that I personally welcome. But um, it was really about um, having a sense of um, going to somewhere thinking one thing and then realising right at the 11th hour, which is why, you know, um, uh, uh, Peggy um um which is which is played by lauren patel who's the the friend of kiddo he's kind of like i'm not into this you know what's happening um i don't want to go um and uh kiddo is 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 simply a a pet um that's been yeah. in the family for a long time and she's looked through the window and she's seen you know children leave the bus um and not come back and I'm wondering what that what that means because obviously nothing's explained to her and because she's a different yeah. animal to the family. Um and the the reason why there's that picture with um um with with Jasper holding up kiddo, the, you know, he's grown up with her as a family pet because they yeah. just, you know, dad, the be Bev just hadn't had the heart to for whatever reason, and we're still writing you know, further parts of the story as to why she was kept. Um I spoke to somebody um, recently, I can't think who it was, but they were saying that it was quite common for um, farmers to keep an animal, not necessarily as a pet in the house, but just mm. keep them, you know, they, they get quite fond of them because, you know, farmers aren't yeah. monsters and they do yeah. have hearts. And um, and that's that's the only thing. I mean, somebody said, 
um you know you're making farmers out to be be monsters and, and i was like i know we kind of we were implying that but you, you need to see the whole film when it does come out because that that explores that in a lot more depth about generational decisions and the pressures of that and not being able to move out of one industry into another even if you even though you'd like to and all that kind of thing so that's going to be explored a lot more deeply but certainly the 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 initial question you're asking is that the, the metaphor is simply, you know, pigs going to slaughter, but, but seeing, and, and one of the things that I found when I went to the, the vigils, well, I didn't realize that the pigs was only six months old. Cause one of the things that I was really trying to push with, with Lewis, the producer was, can the, um, can they be, I didn't think six months old, cause that just logistically wouldn't, would be a bit of a nightmare to try and film, you know, <laughs> but not six months old babies, but certainly a lot younger because I think that the younger they are more, the more harrowing the message. Um, yeah. But it was really the, the best we can do is people that are around sort of 18 years old because of the shoot, shoot length time and chaperones and all that kind of stuff. So that's where we went with yeah. that. Well, it certainly would have been a different kind of movie if it had been little kids anyway. <laughs> <laughs> might yeah, have been a bit of a, yeah, <laughs> a little bit a bit too much but anyway. yeah um so uh, I'm, I'm just about out of questions but I do yeah. want to know um unless you've got some some other thoughts that you still wanted to talk about um the what what did you want people to get out of the film that was um that's a really good question I, I I think just to provoke thought that's all I wanted I, I, I my my agenda if you like is to quite passively mention you know pigs are being gassed right um or you have thought about the fact that you probably don't need to do this anymore with the with the with the and then there's a whole subject on plant-based food and processed food that that's kind of countered but it was just simply have a think about it next time you th th i think that my my uh agenda has become a lot clearer through this journey um of if i can simply communicate through through film and all the other projects to the people that love animals really love animals they love their cats i love cats kitten pyramid the band that's you know <laughs> a little bit of a, a subtle not so subtle message um but you know if you if you claim to love them as much as you do surely you must see the conflict when you but you eat a chicken sandwich or a bacon sandwich surely one animal of a similar size with eyes and legs and a heartbeat and a, and next to your cat how can you go well I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna pet that one and love that one but i'm gonna eat that one and and sign up to everything like you've seen at an abattoir yeah. i'm cool with all of that and that, that and that to me doesn't doesn't um doesn't clash um, because I think that's quite, yeah. and that the the good thing about being a, a 50 year old very recent convert is I've also eaten bacon sandwiches and loads of steaks and loads of loads of meat loads of pork I mean I, I I've ate so much I mean if, if you if you saw everything I've eaten in my lifetime behind me it would probably be like, like <laughs> a building so I, yeah. I'm not judging anybody I'm just simply saying yeah. three things it's it's better for you i think i and from personal experience i feel a lot healthier and low and i don't look it is six o'clock in the morning here so you know so <laughs> he, he looks so tired you know that's why he hasn't i'm just it's just early um, so health um it's from what i can understand broadly it is better for the environment if we eat less meat i think that's a that's i'm quite comfortable saying that without being um uh kind of debated back and being wrong um and then simply just don't don't kill things it's it's not a very nice thing no but don't be complicit to killing things if you can avoid it you know i think that's that's what i'm trying to achieve with everything i'm doing but in simply if you think about after it and i think you it was it you that said that even after a few days you were still thinking about it it was still it would yeah yeah it, it, it's it's extremely successful in its subtleness so People generally don't want to be hit over the head with no. any type of um, proactive thought very much, especially in horror. They kind of want a, a, a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am type type of deal. But yeah. um, I think it's really successful in in its 
in its subtleness. And that's, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good watch. It did make me think about things. And like I said, it the penny dropped on a certain number of aspects of it days yeah. after. Yeah. Um, and, and what's next for you now? Are you looking to do some more films? Are you going to try and make it into a feature film? Mm. What's, uh, what's, what's new for you? I think, I think that's what we would like to do is just what format that would take. There is definitely a desire for, from my perspective to write more of the story. Um, and yeah. while they were filming the scenes where Lauren or, or Peggy gets shot, I was sat, there's a photo of me sat in the corner with my laptop writing the story thinking there's more to this. This can go here. This can go there. You know, developing um, Jasper's character a lot more because he's clearly very conflicted because he he's his the pet that he's had all his life is now going to be you know slaughtered um and yeah. he has an issue with that um but he knows it's the thing to do and we're all we're all challenged with conflicting decisions that we have to make through family mm -hmm. I, I would say yeah. I and mean, it's fairly common um for whatever reason so um I'm I'm fleshing that out I know Brett is too um, I think I think Brett and I are likely to write the story together. Rather, it was quite a zigzaggy way of journey yeah. with, with the short. Of I came up with stuff, he came up with stuff, I came up with stuff after. And I was like, why don't they all wear pink outfits to represent pigs? And they were like, that's a bit heavy handed. And I was like, but if they don't really know until the end, then they're just it's, and it, it's not bright pink and it doesn't have a picture of a pig on it. It's it's quite subtle. Um, yeah. So uh, I think there's definitely an extended story. Um, there's an appetite for it inside the with with the producer and and the, the director of photography Jordan and um, and Brett uh, certainly is with the actors. I mean, um, I've, mm. I've talked with them all about. They're all great. Oh, they were great. Yeah, they're amazing, aren't they? And they're all really, yeah, really you know, really genuinely, really lovely, warm, kind people. Um, they were. I mean, again, credit to. Um, to Brett and and Lewis on, on pulling these people in because they're so perfect for the roles, not just for the short book, but if it turned into a feature. And we we do leave the book fairly open as to, I mean, there's a lot of screaming at the very end, but it's not to say that she yeah. does. Um, no. No, there's there's lots of there's lots of room there. Cause I was I said to I said to um uh Lisa who plays Kiddo, I said, I don't want you not to come back because you're so great in it. And she's like, oh, bless you. Well, she says, well, you know, it's, it's, that's that's the that's the business. You know, if I'm not, I'm not. And I was like, no, I really would love you to come back because I I think there's so much to explore in the relationships that you only get a taste of through through the shore. Mm. I think the only thing that we I was talking to Jordan about this yesterday is is it is it a feature or is it a series or is it you know in a conventional streaming sense or is it lots of bite sized fifteen minutes that we we build. Um, that ultimately, you know, is is a is a is a feature. So we we're kind of banding those ideas around at the moment. So, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Actually, I I like the idea of a series. I'd probably yeah, <laughs> I, I do too. And it's such it's so topical, you know. Yeah, and, there's and so those, many different avenues you can take that down so to. Many. So. Just seeing the the bigger world, getting back to the farm and seeing what that will actually look like, and how many metaphors we can play with there about the different aspects of farming, mm -hmm. um, and the and the whole subject of the environment. Um, I mean, environment and, and vegetarianism, let's say, they're such old tropes that you're like, oh, here we go. It's, have we not talked about that enough? But I I don't know. People people get when you look at the responses, people are so passionate about the subject. I mean, I've, I've World Pig Week has only been running for like because it, it goes out on the 29th at the same time as the film. But it's I only did a post like a few days ago, and there's like hundreds, hundreds of comments and people are mm. debating heavily with each other, you know, the, 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 yeah, the extremes of people yeah. that are like very religious saying, well, God said we should eat meat. And then, and then another, it, it does start. And, I think, and I think that would be where the, the, the debate would end, but then another Christian will mm. go, yes, but if you read the text deeply and they're referring to the specific text about the fact that you need to be compassionate and like, and so there's, there's religious debate still going on about that. There's other people going, oh, this, you know, the idea makes me, you know, is it World Pig Week? Because that means I can eat more pork. And it's like, no, that's not what it means. But 
what's somebody going to say to that you know so the subject is still as as tired as i think it is it's still very very alive and then you've got the environmental <laughs> aspects yeah and there's not many movies that that center on this topic it's a nice way to kind of come in under the radar and mm -hmm. bring some new eyes to a subject that people don't really want to talk about yeah so i like it for that um Good. i like it for that idea thank you that's, that's great well, I'm, you know, I'm really pleased that you've, you've watched it and I, I thought the review was brilliant and you, you got it, obviously, but you also fleshed out areas that I hadn't thought of either um, by looking at other people's reviews, which are, some of them I hadn't seen. So, excuse me. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And I can't believe you worked at an abattoir. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 the things that happen, I, I was talking, I interviewed um, Paddy, who plays um, Jasper a couple of days, about, about a week ago. And he said that he's he's called Paddy because his grandfather is Irish and is a farmer or had been a farmer. And I was like, that's just so you play a farmer's lad in this film. But and your granddad yeah. was an Irish farmer. What the hell? You know, it's most like the yeah, yeah. just very some weird uh, I, it, parallels. It was a it was a it was kind of a, a bit of a desperate situation at the time when I took the job. It wasn't something that I particularly wanted to do it was a cattle cattle farm so right. um yeah and they had a now I won't go into details because you probably don't want to know <laughs> but yeah I just oh. the, the office like I I honestly I knew if someone from the kill floor had come into the office because that smell that's really? outside is also on them and I would just it'd just be like this immediate <gasps> yeah get out <laughs> Yeah, just, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I say, people have to do they have to do jobs um and you know the 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 depth of their sense of what's happening or their cognitive to kind of dissonance as to what's actually happening you know it, it's we, loads of people do jobs that they don't want to do that maybe are conflicting whether it's from the environment perspective or or morally it's 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 you know it's it's questionable um so i think it's we all have to do what we have to do and nobody should be judging anybody unless they knowingly do it and they could avoid it i think that's the thing mm. really or they could do something about it in a, even in a small way um so yeah hopefully well definitely i mean my, my concern about people just going oh here we go another another vegan trope uh, they're not doing that that there's there's definitely a lot more and i think again you know, back to the to the guys in, in the crew, really there, let's let's really push push hard on the horror aspect and talk to a horror audience was a real was a real visionary um decision mm. to make that I was I was really resisting because I, I didn't want to switch people off. We'd got um we were very closely aligned with the vegetarian society in the UK as well. Um and mm. I was concerned that they would withdraw their support if they felt their members would be offended by the film. So I had a bit of an agenda through the decision-making mm -hmm. process of what that could imply with the people that we were starting to work with. Um, and I'm, they're amazing. I mean, Richard, um, uh, there's the CEO of the Vegetarian Society, when I talked to him about it, he said, look, I think, I think they're going to shoot her at the end. There's going to be a gun and there's going to be, you know, a, a bullet hole. And at the, initially he was quite concerned about that. But by then I was like, I really trust what the guys are doing in the film side. So I don't want to be that person, you know, as a as an executive producer as well to go. Right, guys, we really can't. We, and, 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 and try and pull strings where I want I want creative people as a creative person to be able to do. If you're good at what you do and you, you know, you, you should be allowed to do. You shouldn't be curtailed by things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But by the end of it. Richard when it's amazing and 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 also they've been accused by some factions within the society of not pushing things hard enough so it was it was a, a nice it was just a really nice experience all the way through really of just everybody trusting each other and 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 wanting to produce something that we were all mega proud of and I think that's what we've done I think you've done it too hmm. absolutely so congratulations on um your first film and Thank I you. hope to see, <laughs> I hope to see a series or a feature film coming out. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely be interested in watching that. Yeah, yeah, me, me too. Can't wait. <laughs> Thank you for, for interview, interviewing us.
Yeah.